After months of waiting and nothing but rumors, AMD finally brought us their first budget-friendly option, and it came out with a decent selection to choose from, which is great, but the question is, how do you decide which one is for you? In this video, I have, in, at least in my opinion, one of the best looking options available. On top of that, it has a pretty impressive spec sheet and may have one of the best coolers, if not the best, available. So you might be asking yourself, well, what the heck is wrong with it then? And don't AIB cards basically perform the same as the reference designs, maybe slightly better? Well, I'm going to address those concerns and talk about the pros and cons that do exist. Like the fact that ASRock made some really smart and some possibly bad decisions when it came to the cooler design. Or the fact that this card actually earns the OC in its name with the fact that its game clock and boost clocks sit pretty high over reference and most of the competition. But you may have trouble fitting it inside your case. This video is brought to you by SCD Key. Are you tired of overpaying for Windows? Well, SCD Key has got you covered for a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a crazy low price. All you do is click on the link in the description below. Make your selection and click buy now. On top of that, you can get an additional 25% off using my discount code BPC25 for a limited time. The best part is you can fast and secure checkout using PayPal. Type in activation settings, click on change product key, paste in your brand new key, click next, then activate. Now you're all set. You can also get a great deal on Microsoft Office with the link in the description below using my offer code. Let's start this off by saying, this is not the version I wanted to buy. And that's nothing against ASRock. I actually wanted the Hellhound because that would you know, pair up perfectly against my 6600 Hellhound that I have. But unfortunately, at the time, it was sold out. So I decided, which one is unique and maybe even a little pretty? And that's where I came across the Steel Legend from ASRock. So quick disclaimer for those that are maybe new to PC or just don't know this, but in all honesty, most AIB cartridges add in board partner designs compared to reference perform pretty much the same, maybe about 5% over. That's where when you can find an OC variant, which is overclocked variant, that is close to the MSRP price, it can really pay off. That's if the OC doesn't suck and it actually qualifies as an overclock. Let's start off with the obvious. This is the only white version that I'm aware of. I'm sure Asus is probably gonna come out with one, but if this is the design style that you're going with, well, here you go. One other important thing to note is this is one of the few models with decent RGB. Most of them are just like the nameplate on the edge just lights up in different colors. So let's start to dig into the details where things get really interesting. I'll go ahead and put the specs on the screen here and I'm gonna talk about the standouts. First up is the main GPU die itself. Cores will be the same as the AMD standards, but clock speeds get pretty good. Both the game clock and the boost clocks are 70 megahertz over standard spec. Which again, for anyone who is new to this, that's pretty good. And yes, most modern cards do boost over spec without issue. The plus side with this is think about the factor of this will probably have a little bit better binning when it comes to the dies themselves. Next up is the VRAM, which I know is a huge point of contention for a lot of people. And yes, this is an 8GB card, it's GDDR6, and it's on a 128-bit interface. It's important to note this is a 1080p card and in most scenarios that's going to be plenty. For those specific games and titles that do require more, yes it will bleed over into your system RAM. Now you can use SAM to help alleviate some of that issue, but again it won't be perfect. One very important thing to be aware of is that this is a Gen 4 PCIe card by 8 lanes. So if you are rocking a Gen 3 motherboard, you are going to see some performance drop due to that. Another positive thing to look at is the fact that AMD recommends only a 550 watt PSU for this guy. ASRock does recommend a 600 watt. That's likely because of the fact that the boost clocks and the game clocks are a bit higher. I do think the 600 watt is probably overkill, but it would leave you a little bit of room for headroom if you want to upgrade or overclock your CPU, etc. as well. But in all honesty, I think a good 550 watt should be plenty to run this considering it only has a total board power of 165 watts. Now, the part of the intro that may have surprised some of you is the fact that you may have trouble fitting this in your case, and that's because most budget systems and the cases that contain them are not the largest available on the market. On top of that, most budget cards is what people choose for their small ITX builds. In short, this is not the card for that. Yes, it's only 2.25 slots, which seems small compared to recent releases, but it's a budget tier card. You can get a lot of 2 slot 20 ETIs or other higher models versus this guy. The reason I think ASRock went with such a big cooler, on top of the fact that, yes, it's a beefy cooler and that functions as a big beefy cooler, is maybe for those who have a budget-friendly build want to actually fill out the case better so it does look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and impressive. Speaking of the cooler, she is beefy, but she only has two heat pipes, which seems stupid until you take a closer look. 
These two heat pipes are squared off to maximize contact on the cold plate. This contact is further enhanced with a large copper base plate to help absorb all the heat it can. The base plate is aided even more with what ASRock is calling their nano thermal paste, which might just be marketing hooey. What's not hooey is the fact that they actually have thermal pads equipped to the back side of the PCB contacting the back plate. So the back plate not only supports the oversized cooler and looks good, it actually helps its thermal capacity. If you want to see how this specific model competes against the RX 6600, you're going to have to get subscribed and see my upcoming videos. Until then, if you need a refresher on the 6600, go ahead and check out my video here of it versus the closest competitor, the 3060. Until then, do me a favor, check out my merch below. Please hit that like and subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one.